And Dylan will get that chance to go pro this August as he joins the NGA Tour. We will definitely keep you updated on his journey throughout the entire fall. Mark? Well, moving now to a subject that hits Lima close to home, teen pregnancy. Recent U.S. Census Bureau numbers show that in the past few years, Lima has ranked as one of the highest in the country for young unwed mothers. A few years ago, the well-being of those unwed mothers and the futures of their unborn children lay heavy on the heart of a local nurse. And that's how the Guiding Light Teen Pregnancy House was born. Now celebrating its one-year anniversary, Jennifer has more on the way this house is being used to change lives. Thanks, Mark. Well, I am really pleased to have Julianne Frankhauser joining me this portion of the show to talk about such an important topic and such a prevalent, well, not prevalent, but such an important ministry, I should say, here in Allen County. Julianne is the executive director of Guiding Light Maternity Home, which is located on South Main Street here in Lima. And you have been open now for almost an entire year, right? Yes, um, we took our first girl in April 1st, so we're excited to say that we have made it through and we've serviced uh, about 14 girls so far. This process was years of prayer, years of work to get this house ready to go, and in one year's time, 14 girls have come through the house. Give me a picture of what that means. How does a girl, uh, of course, we're talking about unwed mothers who don't have a place to go. How do they get to where you are and, and what happens then? Uh, we get different referrals from different agencies, schools, counselors, um, juvenile court, whoever finds that there is a girl that's in a desperate situation. Um, usually they are homeless young ladies, um, maybe not living with their original family or support system. They may be living friend to friend. Um, that's our ideal case. Um, and then, you know, they, uh, I think average age is 16 to mm. about 21. Um, so they come to us and we sit down and talk to them about the program we offer. Um, we ask them their background, you know, we try to get to know a little bit about what their needs are. Uh, and we find that what we're offering in our structured environment is something they need. We start with some discipline and order, some rules, some limitations, which they're usually not familiar with. And the life skills are added into that so that they understand what it's like to manage a home, to make sure that, you know, they know how to cook or provide what they need for their child. So it's a self-sufficiency program. So this is not a, something where they can actually move in and live for years. This is a temporary mm -hmm. program guy designed to get them to where they need to be to, to be good mothers? Yes. Um, we kind of say it's a boot camp or kind of a net to get them prepared to jump out of so they can fly um, mm. and they can learn what does it take because sometimes um, they get into these situations and they haven't had the, the correct upbringing to help them to know how to be self-sufficient and so we guide them in what it takes to do that whether it's employment, um, learning how to you know, uh, well finish school. We have a lot of dropouts and so we help them finish their GED and uh, you know, find an apartment, um, get your driver's license, everything they're gonna need to be independent for themselves and their child. And of course, we have parenting classes. We also try to collaborate with other people in the community that are already offering services to young moms too. So this was something that God put on your heart several years ago. You diligently kept through, people started donating money. I'm sure mm -hmm. you, tons of hard work on your part. Now one year into this ministry, having it going, what surprises have you seen or what, what exciting things has God shown you through this? Well, as far as um, our evaluations that we put out there with questionnaires, we find that the girls um, really have embraced the idea of letting God in. Um, so they start to build a relationship with God. And that's one of the first things they mentioned that they didn't realize that that was so important because we teach them that man will fail you, but God never will. So they gain strength from that. And they know how to pray um, and to come to him with every care. Um, we go to church every Sunday and most of them have come to the altar just to pour out their hearts to God and say, God, I leave these cares with you. And so they gain that ability to know that there is a higher power that really does care about them. They even if they're not at Guiding Light or they may not have their family there for them, God is always going to find a way to help them in their needs. That's so that's a, the most amazing part, I think. That's wonderful. Um, it's no secret that Allen County has a high number of unwed mothers among the top, not only in the, in the state, but in the country. Yes. Um, do you have, you have house mothers there? Do you have people there? I mean, what is it like for these girls living there? 
Well, Monday through Friday, they have a pretty uh, structured schedule. They get up at 7.30 every morning. They get, make their own breakfast. They exercise. They have to be dressed by 9. Um, they have a weekly Bible study, a weekly parenting class. Um, they have other programs they go to in the community. They go to class. They have to be enrolled in education, whether they've had their diploma or they're going to college. Um, they have a job they attend to. And um, so we try to keep them well informed, cooking class, sewing mm. class. They have a laundry day. They have a dinner day which they're required to provide food for the whole house and mm. so um, on their dinner days and other days they have to be cooking for themselves and others. Now you you are operate under donations is that correct? Yes we do. Um, and you have a celebration coming up March 29th to celebrate that one year anniversary. What is going to be taking place that day? Well that day we're going to be doing like an open house with tours. Uh, we're going to have food, a yogurt bar. Uh, we'll have prizes. So we'll be passing out um, tickets for door prizes. The girls are actually doing a bake sale. So they're going to have items there that they made by themselves and all those uh, proceeds go to them to split so that they have a little bit of extra money. Um, so some board members are going to be able to come, so you'll get to talk to them about their experience that they've mm. seen since the beginning. Um, so we'll just try to make it more of a feel of uh, open house and um, let everyone know in the community, you know, what we offer and where we're at, what we're doing. That's March 29th from 2 to 5 p.m. You're located at 592 South Main Street. And uh, where would you like people to call? First of all, if they want more information about the open house, but secondly, but more importantly, if they want to donate, who you, wh what contact number can you give them? Um, we have a contact number for referrals and all, which is 419-236-7935. Uh, we do have a house number if there's an urgent need for 567-712-2583. Um, and we also have a guiding light email. Um, it's the number one, guidinglight at gmail.com. All right, and all of those numbers will be on the screen there for you to, um, to be able to see in case you need those. You can also call us at TV44 if you have any questions about the Guiding Light Pregnancy Sandy. Above all, just ask that you'd be praying, praying for Julianne, praying for the girls that, are, that God is bringing to that house and what he can do through that time and that opportunity that they have to be at the Guiding Light Teen Pregnancy Center. Thanks so much to Julianne for being with us and for her ministry and her willingness to do what God has asked her to do.